make a video about hypopigmentation. Well, that's what I'm doing and that's why you're here. Today, we are talking about hypopigmentation, what causes it and what you can do to get your background skin color back. There's a lot of talk about hyperpigmentation. Dark spot correctors are everywhere. But what do you do when you have lost some of your skin color in certain areas? The first thing is you've got to figure out why. Because when it comes to hypopigmentation, there are many possible causes, each with their own specific way of going about treating them. Today, we're gonna to go over a handful of more common, and maybe some not so common, causes of hypopigmentation. Hypopigmentation can result whenever there is a process that causes the melanocytes, which are the cells in your skin that make the pigment melanin, processes that cause those cells to, well, make less melanin pigment. That may be temporary, or you can have a process that destroys those pigment-producing cells, those melanocytes. You might have a white spot because you were born that way. You were born with what people commonly refer to as a birthmark. A birthmark is this umbrella popular term for a whole host of different spots, but you can be born with a birthmark that is lighter than your background skin type. If you have that, embrace it. It's part of who you are. There's no cream or lotion that will correct that. You can also have hypopigmentation as the result of scarring. That little yeast that lives on everyone's skin is always wreaking havoc. And one of the many ways in which it can cause issues for you as well, it can cause hypopigmentation. You can get a skin rash that's very common, especially if you live in a tropical humid climate called tinea versicolor or pityriasis versicolor because God forbid we not have more than one name for a skin condition. Now this condition starts out kind of as these raised sort of scaly spots and with time you can lose your background skin color in the affected spots. This condition comes and goes, like I said, it gets worse when you're hot and sweaty during certain times of the year. If you wear really heavy clothing that restricts evaporation of sweat, that can lead to flares of this. And because it is caused by that little yeast, malassezia, the way to treat this is to use an anti-dandruff shampoo. You lather it on the skin, let it sit on the skin for several minutes, and then you rinse it off. Check out my video on how to get rid of tinea versicolor. I lay this out in detail there. The treatment for tinea versicolor is a topical anti-dandruff shampoo that targets it's that little yeast that causes the condition. Malassezia yeast also cause dandruff in the scalp and its cousin on the rest of our skin, seborrheic dermatitis. If you have a deeper skin tone and you have seborrheic dermatitis, guess what can happen and commonly does? The inflammation from the seborrheic dermatitis can take away some of your background skin color. Initially, you have these scaly patches like on the forehead, the sides of the nose. It can happen really anywhere on your body where you have hair follicles and patients a deeper skin tone, they get misdiagnosed as possibly having vitiligo all the time, when in reality, they don't have vitiligo, they have seborrheic dermatitis, and if they use an anti-dandruff shampoo, because again, certain anti-dandruff shampoos target the yeast responsible for seborrheic dermatitis, it can improve and their background skin color slowly will eventually return to normal. Check out my video on how to treat and get rid of seborrheic dermatitis. I give a lot of tips, tricks in that video. What about the acne causing bacteria? Something that pops up in teenagers, young adults, can really happen at any age, but more common in younger people, is these little white spots that crop up on like your stomach, your chest, your back, and it starts out as a few, but over time you seem to get a lot more of them. This is called progressive macular hypomelanosis. Progressive because you progressively get more, macular because the spots are flat, hypomelanosis because the spots are hypomelanotic, meaning they have a lower amount of pigment so they appear lighter. For the longest time we had no clue what causes this. Guess what is going on though? The acne causing bacterium that lives on everyone's skin, cutie bacterium acne is the one that gives you pimples. Well it can cause this, a skin eruption that takes away the color of your skin, specifically over the hair follicles where these white spots are appearing. The treatment is to use a benzoyl peroxide acne wash, lather to the affected areas, let the lather sit on the skin for several minutes and then rinse it off. It will help cut down on that bacteria, allow it to clear up, and eventually your skin color can return to normal. Check out my video on how to get rid of progressive macular hypomelanosis. I give a lot more tips and tricks in that video. Listen, I've been doing YouTube for eight years, happy anniversary, daily videos. So at this point on YouTube, I pretty much have a video for every single one of these conditions, and I go into a lot more detail on how to get rid of them. Pityriasis alba, what the heck is that? Well, if you have eczema 
on your face. It can take away the color of the skin. You get these little white circular spots on like the cheeks, around the mouth, really anywhere, but that is where they commonly appear. This is actually really common in little children with atopic dermatitis, and it is more obvious in children who have a deeper skin tone. Freaks parents out because they worry that their child is developing vitiligo. Some reassurance, once the atopic dermatitis, the eczema comes under control with the use of moisturizers, a topical steroid if necessary. Well, when things calm down, that white circular spot or spots, plural, if there are multiple, will eventually go back to the normal skin color. It is not a permanent or progressive issue. Check out my video on pityriasis alba. I go more into detail on what to expect with getting rid of it. Anytime you have inflammation in the skin, if you have a deeper skin tone in particular, it can take away some of your background skin color. We already kind of alluded to this when I was talking about seborrheic dermatitis. Pityriasis alba related to atopic dermatitis is kind of similar, but really anything, even your acne can heal with a light spot. The good news is that so long as the condition that led to the issue comes under control and is no longer flaring and active, eventually with time, the pigment will return. You don't need to buy a special cream or anything of that sort. You just need to give it time, make sure that the skin condition, whether it be acne, your rosacea, is under good control and eventually the skin color can return. How long does it take? Well, that depends on how extensive the primary issue was, how long the primary issue was going on for, uncontrolled. Lichen sclerosis. This is an inflammatory skin condition where inflammation comes into a specific location in the skin and you get these porcelain white areas and it can be very itchy, very painful. You can end up getting these like blisters and the skin turns, well, porcelain white. You have hypopigmentation. Treatments for this are necessary because it is progressive and it can eventually cause more disruption. This commonly can occur in the genital area in men and women and it can go on to form these scars that can be quite debilitating. So it's important to treat it. Treatments include topical steroids, topical calcineurin inhibitors. Check out my video on lichen sclerosis. I go into a deep dive with regards to the different treatment options. Then there is a lupus. Cutaneous lupus often takes away the skin color. Lupus is an autoimmune disorder and it can affect the skin. It can affect the skin in a variety of different ways, but it commonly will take away the skin color. It also can affect the hair and it can take away the skin color in the scalp. Certain types of lupus do go on to form scars and once that scar has formed, you will not regain pigment in that area. So controlling it with medications is key. Check out my video on lupus. I go into detail with regards to the different types of skin lupus and the different treatment options. Psoriasis often will take away some of your background skin color. In fact, the psoriasis oftentimes will be hypopigmented around the edge as it's actually starting to clear up. The treatment is to, well, control the psoriasis with appropriate medications depending on the overall severity, location, and you as an individual. Anything that leaves a scar can take away the skin color, and when that happens, if there is scar tissue there, you will not regain pigment in those areas. You can get hypopigmentation as a result of sun damage. This is actually very common in older adults who have a lot of sun damage. You will notice that they have areas of hypopigmentation. There is a type of sun damage that happens on the neck called poikiloderma of Savat. You have these kind of brownish reddish areas, prominent blood vessels, and you have areas of hypopigmentation scattered throughout. Check out my video on poikiloderma of Savat. I go into a deep dive in that video on all of the different treatment options. Then there is a condition called idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis. Idiopathic means we don't really know what causes this. Guttate meaning droplet-like. Hypomelanosis meaning areas of, well, loss of pigment, little white droplets. Often happens on the legs, the arms, really anywhere. Often in chronically sun-exposed skin, it's thought to perhaps be related to sun damage, but we're not entirely clear if that is the cause. Difficult to treat. There are some things like punch grafting that may improve it, but as you can imagine, it is often sort of extensive in terms of the number of little droplets. It can be very challenging. Check out my video on idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis. I go into a deep dive there with all of the different treatment options available. Then there is vitiligo. Vitiligo is a progressive autoimmune condition that takes away the pigment in the skin. Specifically, it does it by attacking the pigment producing cells, the melanocytes. As vitiligo progresses, it goes from hypopigmentation, meaning decrease in pigment, to depigmented, bone white, porcelain white. Treatment options 
options include things like phototherapy, topical interlesional steroids, different medications that are coming out that modulate certain arms of the immune system. Check out my video on vitiligo. I go into a deep dive there with regards to treatment options for vitiligo. Syphilis can lead to hypopigmentation. Syphilis is known as the great imitator. It can cause your skin to do all sorts of things, including hypopigmentation. It's never a wrong idea to consider syphilis whenever you are faced with any sort of medical malady. And syphilis is on the rise. Check out my video on syphilis. I do a deep dive there. You can develop hypopigmentation as a negative side effect to a medication. Topical steroids can take away the color of your skin. In fact, hydroquinone is utilized to treat hyperpigmentation, but it can potentially take away the color of your skin in unaffected areas if used inappropriately. And if you have ever had a corticosteroid injection for a skin problem, a scalp hair problem, Kenalog, otherwise known as triamcinolone, it's possible that it goes out into the skin in a way that takes away the color of the skin. This is not permanent with time, the skin color will return to normal. And last but not least, you can develop hypopigmentation secondary to a bad contact dermatitis. Now, contact dermatitis can be allergic, meaning you are allergic to something that has come in contact with the skin, or it can be an irritant contact dermatitis. Also, if you get poison ivy, poison ivy also can cause an itchy rash that heals with hypopigmentation. All right, guys, so that is a roundup with regards to hypopigmentation. There are even more things out there, certain skin cancers, for example, that take away the color of your skin that we didn't even get into in this video, but I hope this is a good starting point for you. Now, on the end slate, I am going to put my video all about vitiligo. I want you to watch that one next so you can learn more about vitiligo and the different treatment options available. And make sure you check out any of my other videos with regards to the different conditions that cause hypopigmentation. I hope you enjoyed this one. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.